search engine marketing, which is the best tool out there for attracting motivated people that are actively searching for what your company has to offer. I'm just curious, how many people in here have a proactive search engine marketing program in place? Okay, just two hands. How many people in here have a proactive social media marketing program in place? Okay, I'm seeing more hands for social media than I am search. You guys need to focus on search before social media. This is the best opportunity to attract prospects to your website. I'm not saying social media marketing is not an important tool. I'm just saying this one is much more important. Because online, if Google cannot find you, you are invisible. Nobody knows who you are. You need to figure out how you can integrate search engine marketing into your marketing mix. According to research, 80% of the time when people go online, this is their first stop, a search engine like Google. And they are going to search for what they're looking for, and they're only going to go to the sites that are on that first page. So if you are not on that first page of Google, you are invisible to, to your prospects, people that are not doing business with you currently, but could be. So I'm going to talk about how you can leverage search engine marketing in your marketing mix. And I'm going to start just by defining it. There's two types of results that we're looking at when we're looking at search engine uh, results. The primary results are the organic search results. They're the primary results on the page. 75% of people prefer to click on these results because they consider them to be more genuine. Now your ranking in the organic results is determined by two primary factors. The first is the relevancy of your website to what that person is searching on. So for example, if somebody is searching on the phrase wholesale florist, we want to make sure that we use the phrase wholesale florist in a relevant fashion in your website's copy and its coding. The more relevant your site is to what that person is searching on, the higher your ranking will be in the organic results. But that's not the only factor that Google considers. Google also considers your link popularity. And what that means is how many other third-party websites that are important in your industry are linking into your website as a resource. The more links you have coming into your site from other important sites, the more popular your site is in Google's eyes. Google wants to put those popular sites on that first page. So the process of achieving a top ranking in the organic results is known as search engine optimization, or SEO is the acronym. And it is a process that is going to take months before you get on that first page. It's very similar to a public relations process. So if you perform this on a regular basis in a very focused fashion, you can get on that first page in a matter of months. But there's another opportunity that exists, and that is an advertising opportunity advertising in the paid search results. This is also known as pay-per-click advertising. Now these are ads, but they are very different from traditional ads, say in a print publication. Because in a print publication, we're paying to be included in that magazine regardless of the results that it produces. With pay-per-click advertising, your ad can show up on this first page all day long, and you will not pay a dime unless somebody clicks on your ad and visits your website. So it's a pay-for-performance advertising model that is tied to results. Your ranking is determined by your participation in an online auction, where each of the different companies listed, they're bidding for position. So your bid amount, the amount that you're willing to pay per visit or pay per click, as well as your budget, all determine your ranking. And your ranking, uh, I'm sorry, your budget can be as much or as little as you want it to be. You can start a campaign with a $50 budget just to see what kind of results it can produce. I have some clients that spend $20,000 a month on pay-per-click advertising because they can tie it directly to leads and sales that they're generating. So where search engine optimization takes months, this takes minutes. You can have an ad campaign up and running just within a few minutes and start driving targeted traffic immediately. Yes? Absolutely. Yep. The, the comment was, uh, one of the things that you can do with pay-per-click advertising is be very focused on the audience group that you're trying to reach. You do not have to worry about, if you were a regional wholesaler, your ads showing up all across the world. You can set it up so that your ads are only showing up within the geographic area that you serve. If you want your ads only to show up during your normal business hours, you can set it up that way. 
They go on at 9, they go off at 5. You're not open on weekends, your ads don't have to show on weekends. So you can be very focused with them. Yes, that's exactly how it works, yeah. The, the, the question was, uh, if I have a certain keyword phrase that I want to uh, basically attract an audience that's searching on, when they search on that phrase, my ad will show up only when they're searching on that specific phrase. So when you're setting up pay-per-click, you're saying this is the list of phrases that I want to make sure my ad shows up in front of, and these are the ads that I'm going to be setting up I want to show them, and this is the section of my site I want to send them to. So you don't want to send people just to your home page, you want to send them to the most relevant page based on what they're searching on. Well, yeah, the, I, the, the question was, the, the more that your ad is clicked, does it help determine your future performance? Uh, the question is, can you have an ad showing up in pay-per-click advertising uh, in the ad space as well as have a top ranking in the organic results? Yes, you absolutely can. And uh, Google keeps them completely separate. You, can, you cannot influence your organic ranking by buying ads. Your organic ranking has nothing to do with your, with your ads. So. Exactly. Having both of them does a number of things. You'll get more clicks because you own more of that first page of Google. Uh, in addition, it's a brand statement. You know, if you're trying to be the dominant company for specific phrases, the more references that you can have on the first page, the better. Another thing, social media marketing influences your presence in the search results. If you optimize content on Facebook, your Twitter posts, uh, YouTube videos, they're all social media content. If you use your keyword phrases in the descriptions, they'll show up on that first page of Google. You can own the entire first page with all of your social media posts as well as your website and other information. So it's really important that you figure out what are those phrases, how do I use them effectively, and that's what I'm going to be going over. So yeah, the question is, if we are going through this pay-per-click process with Google, do we have to do this separately with the other search engines? And the answer is yes. Uh, Google has its own ad network, and Bing has its own ad network, and uh, Yahoo threw in the towel, and they gave up on it, and they just licensed Bing's results. So really, just two networks you need to focus on in order to drive that traffic. But I'll give you an example. I work primarily with business-to-business -business companies, and I mentioned that client that spends $20,000 a month on pay-per-click ads. I can't find them $500 worth of action on the other two search networks because so many people are going to Google as their primary network. I saw it up. Yep. Can circle. Yeah. There, there are a number of sites that are out there where you can set up a presence for your company. You know, MerchantCircle.com is one of them. What they do, uh, Google Places is another one. What they do is they find information on businesses from publicly available sources. And they're trying to create these online directories of businesses. And what they allow you to do in some cases is say, yes, that's my business, let me claim it. And in some cases they charge you so that you can beef up your listing in Merchant Circle or whatever. And should you do it, should you not do it? The way I like to look at it is from the customer's perspective first. Are my customers using Merchant Circle? If they are, then I'm going to invest time and money in having a nice prominent listing. If they're not going there to begin with, then let's, let's not worry about it. So that, that's how I look at it. Um, more people are going to uh, Google than to directories like that unless they're very, very focused and have good marketing plans. Any other questions? Yep. The question is, how do we get companies to link to our website? There are a number of strategies that I'm going to be going through, so it's a bit of a longer discussion, but you will get your answers. So we know what search engine marketing is. Now we need to figure out how to take advantage of it. And you begin with the first step, the most important step, keyword research. If you fail at this step, you're going to fail in search engine marketing. This is the art and science of getting inside the heads of your customers to determine what they are searching on. You want to begin by brainstorming. What do we think they're searching on? Let's ask our salespeople. Let's ask our customer service people. Let's ask our customers. If you're looking for what we have to offer, what do you search on? Some people search on product names, product categories, brand names, generic names, applications of the product. How are they going to be using it? So what you want to do is come up with as detailed a brainstorming list as possible and then spend some time on this service. This is Google's keyword research tool. You can find it by going to the address on the screen. You can also find it just by going to Google and searching on the phrase keyword research. It'll be one of the first links that's available. It's a freely accessible service that is so valuable. It allows you to pop in your brainstorming list 
It allows you to point it to your website. It allows you to point it to a competitor's website. And Google will give you a listing of your phrases, as well as a bunch of other related phrases that you may not have thought of, as well as letting you know how many times people are searching on those phrase, phrases per month, both globally and locally. And that local area can be set up to be any geographic area that you serve. So this is such an insightful process. You want to figure out what's on your customers' minds. Use this tool. You want to figure out what you should be blogging about, what you should be writing about, the type of content that you should be basically creating information based on. You can use this tool to get inside your heads of your customer to figure out what they find interesting. So has anybody worked with this tool? OK, a couple hands. Those of you that have not, just play with it. 15 minutes. You'll be hooked. I guarantee it. And you'll get the useful information that you need to know what your customers are thinking about. Any questions about this process or how this tool works? OK. OK, once we know what phrases we're going to be focusing on, then it's a matter of putting them to work and optimizing your website. The search engine optimization process that I had mentioned this is where we are putting those keywords to work on our site to improve our relevancy. Now, it's important to note that when people see your website, they see something very different from what Google sees. Google sees the underlying HTML code that is used by a browser, a web browser, to render a page when a person visits it. So when you're optimizing your content, you need to not only optimize what Google can see, I'm sorry, what people can see, but what Google can see as well. Now, the process of optimizing your website, it's a three-step process. Uh, first, we want to map our keyword phrases to the best landing pages on our site. I recommend that you start with a 30 to 50 phrase list. Do your keyword research, figure out your top 30 to 50 phrases. Then take a look at your website and look at all the different pages that exist and map each phrase to the best landing page. Ideally, each phrase will have one page that you're focusing on. So once you know what your mapping is, which phrases are going to go to which pages, I then want you to focus on the copy, the text-based information that people can read. Each page that you're optimizing needs to have 200 to 300 words of copy, and you want to use that phrase roughly 5% of the time. So five times for every 100 words of copy. In addition, I want you to code your website for success. Optimize the underlying coding elements, which I'm sure you have no interest in learning about right now. So I encourage you, go to my website, download that search engine marketing guide. You will have exactly the coding elements that you need to focus on. It's the perfect thing that you can hand over to your webmaster, to your IT person, whoever is in charge of your website, and say, are we optimizing our site for these different elements? So I'll certainly be happy to answer any questions regarding the coding, but I'm thinking that it's too boring of a topic to go into. Anybody have any questions about this? OK. OK, next, I talked about the importance of inbound links. This is an extremely important aspect of search engine optimization, and that is attracting quality links to your website. And this is where we're going to be focusing on everything that you're looking for. First, I want to make sure that you're thinking about this properly, because when people hear links, they think different things. Are, are they mean links on my website going out, or are they links coming in? I want you to think of your website as a bucket, like this big bucket on the screen right now. And every link from a third-party website is like a stream of water into that bucket. We want to fill that bucket up as high as possible with quality links. Links out of your website. Let's say that you're a wholesaler linking out to a supplier. That is an outbound link. Every outbound link is like a leak in your bucket. So you want to make sure that you have many more inbound links than you do outbound links. Because outbound links penalize you somewhat. Inbound links are valuable. I'm not saying that you should not have any outbound links. I'm just saying there should be a strategic reason for that link. Because you are being penalized somewhat for that outbound link. So what are the strategies for building links? It is very similar to a public relations process. And there are a number of strategies that work very well. Uh, first is to assess and improve your current links. What I want you to do is perform a search for your company's name, 
visit all the different pages that currently reference your company and see is there a clickable link coming back to your website. If there is, great. If there's not, you want to reach out and ask for that link. It's the best way to make the most of your current online exposure. Next, educational content on your website will attract links coming in. There are many websites, blogs that are out there looking for useful information. If you have great content, great videos, a great blog yourself, you will attract links into your site. So that's another great technique. Uh, next, making sure that you're listed in industry and topical directories. Directories related to your industry, directories related to the industries you're trying to serve, meeting planners, if that's who you're going after. There also are just topical directories that just focus on a number of different business topics. Business.com is an example of one of them. Next, this is a fantastic tactic, conducting good old-fashioned public relations, but conducting it online. Take your articles, take your press releases, and syndicate them online using article syndication websites like eZine Articles or ArticleBase for article distribution, or PRWeb for press release distribution. What happens is there are a lot of websites for online publications, blogs, they're looking for content. And they subscribe to receive feeds from these services. And if they happen to like your article, happen to like your press release, they'll pick it up and they'll run it on their site. And you picked up a link. So any one article, any one press release could pick up 5, 10, 50, 100 different links over time. And if you do this on a regular basis, it's really a great way of boosting your ranking exponentially over time. Finally, you can get a little sneaky with this process. There is a subscription-based search engine offered by SEO Moz, SEO Moz, called Open Site Explorer. Open Site Explorer. What you can do with this service is pop in your competitor's website address. It will go out and find all the different links that are going into that competitor and give you a nice listing of sites that you should focus on for your proactive link building efforts. And you want to do this not just for your known competitors, anyone that's on the first page of Google for your most important keyword phrases, they're a competitor. So you want to reach out, you know, pop them in there, see who's linking into them. Most likely they're on that first page because they have a great ranking themselves a lot. It's a subscription-based service that provides a lot of useful tools for the search engine optimization process. So it'll help you with the keyword research. It'll help you analyze your website's pages to figure out which ones are ranking better. And it also helps you with that link building research. Any? Oh, I'm sorry, S-E-O-M-O-Z. Yep. All right, link building is probably the most important aspect of search engine optimization. Google puts a lot of weight in this factor because it's hard to do. It takes a lot of time. But if you do it properly, you will get results. So let's switch gears now. We talked a bit about pay-per-click before. I'll just talk a little bit more about it now. This is a great opportunity to get out there quickly. This is a great opportunity for you to get a prominent presence on that first page without having to wait the months that SEO does. I will make you wait. Uh, the ads that you're running, they're very different from traditional ads, say in a print publication. Not very graphically designed, just simple headlines, simple description, and a link back to your site. This is the interface that you'll be working with. Uh, basically, it provides you with a number of self-service tools within the Google AdWords program so that you can manage your keywords, your ads, your bidding process, your landing pages, and help you keep track of results. Uh, one of the good things about this service is that it not only will help you optimize your campaign from a click perspective, it'll help you optimize your campaign from a lead generation or sales perspective. You can set up pay-per-click advertising so it not only tracks how much did you pay per click or that visit, but how much did you pay per lead, how much did you pay per sale if you have an online commerce site. So that's really the best way to manage your bidding process because you're not bidding any more than what is a reasonable customer acquisition cost. So any, any other questions about pay-per-click advertising or search engine marketing, anything we've talked about? Yep. The, the, the big question, what does a click cost? And that is, that is a tough question to answer because it depends on the competitive nature of that specific phrase. So the niche phrases that people are searching on not in a high volume, but your most likely customer. You know, two, three, four word phrases are the phrases you want to focus on. You'll probably pay anywhere between 50 cents 
to $5 a click, depending on how competitive the phrases are. Uh, if you want to just pop in the phrase flowers, you'll pay $75 a click, because that's a very competitive term. So you're looking for the niche phrases that people are searching on. You'll pay less. But don't think about it just based on I'm paying per click. Oh my god, I'm not going to pay $5 a click. That's ridiculous. $5 just for a visit to the site. If you tie this campaign in with your online lead generation and your online sales efforts, you'll be able to see, is that $5 producing leads and sales? What is my cost per conversion? Because in some cases, you could have a phrase that is $5 a click, seems expensive on the service, could be a bargain because you're getting great customers. <laughs>